we gather now for a reading from the Gospel of Crazy Cat by George Harriman, with your hosts, cartoonists Merrick Bennett and the Reverend Kurt Schaefert, conversing in it the 100-year-old comical artwork of George Harriman. Welcome, everybody. Hi, Kurt. Hi, MK. How's it going? It's going good. Hey, MK. Hey, Merrick. All right, here we go. May 12th, 1920, George Harriman's Crazy Cat. Do you believe in the germ theory, Crazy? I don't believe in nothing I can't see. But germs have actually been seen, fool. Maybe they has, Ignat, but I never have seen one. And what's more, I've never seen no theory, Nita. Well, do you believe in the brick theory? You betcha. Zip. So I'm thinking about gaze. So in the first one, you have Ignat's using the telescope to peer inside the head, right? And then ask a question about what he believes, right? So I cast my gaze upon you to examine you like a specimen. Mm -hmm. And then the second one is almost more like I I have to uh, readjust my perspective and actually go gaze straight down into your head. Mm -hmm. Really put you under the microscope, like, you know, in, in talking about germs, right? But then the third one, crazy gazes back, you know, mm-hmm. as opposed to the, the first two, like looking off into the distance while being examined, but turns that gaze back on the questioner. And we see there in Ignace, uh signs of alarm, right? Like the shaky, the tail and the, and the sort of the emanata, mm-hmm. of like being alarmed at being, you know, how dare you turn that gaze back on me? And when mm-hmm. I think about it in that way, I think that's almost directly what results in the brick being thrown. Like, mm-hmm. I'm examining you. I cast the gaze on you. You do not cast your gaze back on me. Mm-hmm. And then that has, there's this reaction to that, you know, you, that um, crossing that boundary or something. Oh, it's almost like Ignatz was, if, if Crazy said, yes, I believe in germs, Ignatz would have given him a diagnosis. Well, I see germs. He's, he's hinting at that. Germs have actually been seen, fool. You know, play along, be the patient, and I will mm-hmm. diagnose you. But Crazy turns around and looks back through the tube and says, and what's more, and he insists, mm-hmm. he doesn't even believe in theories. And so Ignatz is like, well, the only way to get through to this guy is <laughs> to bring in materiality, actual lived felt experience. That's interesting. What you just said, Merrick, reminds me of um, uh, the, a quote from I think it's Anatola Ryard about as the physician exam or as the physician is diagnosing the patient, the patient is diagnosing the physician. Mm-hmm. Well, Harriman's not drawing this in a, a vacuum, of course. He's drawing it within a year of the last wave of the 1918-1919 influenza mm-hmm. epidemic, right? I mean, this is current events, very hot topic. Do you believe in the germ theory? It's life or death. And it seems really relevant now as we debate whether or not it's safe to go out and have social contact with people again. Do you believe that something you can't see can hurt you? All right. And how do we manage ourselves in the face of this uncertain reality of what we cannot see, which can cause harm? There's this page in my book where I have this drawing of a virus attacking a cell. And I just say, like, this is it. The virus comes in, it attacks the T cell, turns the T cell into a virus factory. Two pages later in the book, I show a person and all of the different things that happen to the body when someone just presents with an uncontrolled HIV infection. And if you think about it, that was a phase in understanding HIV was just, you just had that picture. It was Mm -hmm. quite a while before we had the picture that comes a few pages before of the virus and exactly what it does to what cells and then Mm -hmm. what are the consequences of that thing. Back to what we were talking about is how do we conduct ourselves in the face of so much uncertainty and misinformation, disinformation. Yeah, it strikes me as significant that crazies never hit in the front of the head. He's always hit mm-hmm. in the back of the head by the brick, mm-hmm. by something he can't see. And on that point, it's like, well, this is what gets through to someone who doesn't, who refuses to believe in all the theory. You get hit. If you don't believe it, then you get hit in the head because you're not looking at it straight on. You betcha. And it's interesting too, because this is like a, uh, 
the kind of conversation they're having in the three panels is not a uh, familiar kind of conversation. And the fourth panel is like, yeah, this is how we relate. Yeah, and, and the, their norm for communication is a miscommunication. And just notice that panel, Crazy's tail, totally relaxed, mm. right? What can I learn from Crazy about navigating and being relaxed in the midst of uh, stuff? I came into this thinking, well, Ignatz is the scientist here, the person behind the mouse, behind the microscope. And Ignatz is coming in and saying, well, do you believe in germs? Well, if, if you don't, here's my proof. They have been seen. Maybe that's Ignatz, who's so distressed there, suddenly saying, oh my gosh, he not only rejects my evidence, he rejects the, the structure of my evidence, the structure in which I'm introducing evidence. Well, do you believe in the brick theory? And that is mm -hmm. a theory. That's the only theory Crazy believes in because he feels it. Maybe that's why there's no, I was troubled. There's no sound in that last panel. You can't hear it. You can't see it. Mm -hmm. Just like germs. Mm -hmm. In theory. Yeah. Right. And so it makes me think about like, so what he's trying to convince him is putting it to this moment we're in now, convince him of wearing a mask, convince him of social distancing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what is the brick that can convince someone who doesn't believe in it? Right. It doesn't mm -hmm. believe in um, the necessity of the difficult thing that we have to engage in. And, and as a nuanced reader of Crazy Cat, I hear when you say brick, I, I think of a communication <laughs> medium, <laughs> a basis of a relationship. So maybe, maybe Ignatz has something to teach about how to be skillful regarding belief. Ignatz's interventions are a question, a statement of science, and then another question. And the second question does really good improvisation. How do you get to a betcha? How do you get to compliance as a clinician? Does it look to you like when Crazy says, and what's more, he's holding his hand out as if to say, right this way? <laughs> like giving him an, an introduction, a, an oh, entry yeah, way? Right. Yeah, and what's more, yeah, 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 I'll yeah. tell you this. And yeah, you're next, yeah. you're up. How do you get the brick that touches the back of their head and says, here's lived experience, here's something you have heard of, and here's something you believe in, right. and, and now we're aligned. Or something that makes this matter to you, right? Like germ theory doesn't matter, um, but something that hits me in the back of my head matters. So I'm thinking about ways in healthcare that you do that. And one thing that comes to mind is a comic that Kathy Leamy made once to get uh, diabetic men to uh, understand why that they need to control their blood sugars. And it was a, a small zine called Diabetes is After Your Dick. And basically pointing out that impotence is a side effect uh, over the long term of high blood sugars. So that's the brick, right? Right. So my dad's assisted living a wing. Uh, they've had three deaths right in his wing, and they traced it to asymptomatic grandchild passing it to an elder who then passes it to two others. We got to be careful. Innocence can be fatal. Yeah, and until you have that lived experience, it's a theory. Yeah, yeah, the, the brick is then someone who matters to you, right? The brick is the, your loved one, um, mm -hmm. and, and that's what is the thing that convinces you. Yeah, the deeper those relationships, the heavier the brick. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You got to feel it. Right. So thanks, guys. This is, this is a lot to think about. Um, thanks for reading this with us, MK. Yeah, this is a lot for me to think about, too. Thank you. You betcha. See you again. <laughs> <laughs>